My name is Verli Oesthuizen and I'm a partner at Chipson & Wiley Attorneys. Hi, my name is Kate Oesthuizen and I'm also a partner at Chipson & Wiley. Now, special personal information is information about, about a person that they may not necessarily want other people to know that is particularly sensitive. For example, uh, trade union membership or political persuasion. All of those kinds of pieces of information um, are important. And actually, sometimes it, it may seem that you would never have to gather that information, but it is actually important in some instances. For example, marital status. Many employers will have to gather that information simply because they might have a pension fund um, or because they need to have the next of kin contact details if there's an accident at the workplace. So we have to be able to set out exactly why we need that, personal, that special personal information, but people can't just refuse uh, on the basis that they, they just don't want to give that information. I think it's important to note too that there is a general prohibition in the Act on processing special personal information unless there's either a general authorization for it, alternatively specific authorization in terms of the Act. So an example of specific authorization would be, for example, for healthcare workers who obviously require your health, your health information, your health data, in order to treat you properly. Um, the general authorizations for the processing of special personal information include having the consent of the data subject. Um, can you think of some others, Ver? Um, it might be that in terms of a legitimate interest or um, in terms of a particular act that you're required to get that information. And I think a really great example of that at the moment would be when you enter into a building and you have to give your information for COVID. So all of us walk into a building, we have our temperature, temperature taken, we give over our cell phone number, and um, this is health information, so it's special personal information, but we are not actually allowed to enter into the building unless we give that information, unless we have our temperature taken and it's given over. And that is because in terms of the um, state of disaster regulations, you have to provide that information. And if you don't provide that information, you simply aren't allowed into the building. So we've spoken about personal information. We've spoken about special personal information. And there's another category, which is the personal information of children. Now, this isn't considered special personal, special personal information in terms of the Act, but it is given special attention by Poppy. And the reason, obviously, that it's given special attention is because children are vulnerable and unfortunately sometimes that information becomes very very valuable for terrible reasons but it is information that will need to be processed at schools obviously lots of information about children will need to be processed um, any kind of health information uh, it is for the protection of the privacy of children and the information regulator i would i would guess um, will take this kind of information or any kind of leakage of this information very seriously and i think that the information regulator will shortly be bringing out guidelines relating to the processing of information of children but we may have a ways to wait for that there is something that we need uh, to flag for our clients, which is very, very important, and that would be the transborder, um, trans well, uh, cross-border transfer of information, and that is important when it relates specifically to special personal information and information relating to children. And it may, you may not think that you transfer a huge amount of data overseas, but. Often you are, um, you know, people send emails all the time to um, people overseas, to different companies. I know, for example, Kate works um, within the family law department. And if you can just give us an example of the kind of thing that you come across. Oh, well, we often have international clients and we will, uh, for example, a child might be domiciled in South Africa, but we may need to liaise with a parent who lives in the Middle East or in the UK. And we are then sending that information across borders. And what are the rules relating to that? You can't, <laughs> unless you receive prior authorization from the information regulator. 
And that's actually quite a long process that you have to follow. And there is a guideline uh, on the information regulator's website, but you have to make a specific application to the information regulator saying that you are going to be sending this type of information overseas on a regular basis. Um, and because of that, you need to be exempt from certain provisions in terms of the Act. I think that if you are sending information to the European Union, then you know that the information is going to be processed and protected in the correct manner because they've been doing this for such a long time. However, if you are uh, sending it to a country that doesn't have those data protection laws in place, then you have to be quite careful. Yeah. And you will need the prior authorization of the information regulator to send special personal information abroad as well as the personal information of children. Now, if you go to the information regulator's website, there's a whole guideline about applying for this prior authorization. And we think that it would be a good idea to contact us so that we can assist you with that uh, prior authorization. Because it is a process and you do need to understand what information you are going to be sending overseas. Luckily, you only have to make one application. You don't have to make an application every time you send information overseas, but you've got to get that prior authorization from the information regulator, and it takes a number of weeks for them to consider your application. Look out for further content and for further podcasts in the future as the compliance project nationwide uh, starts to roll out.